Hmm. Okie dokie. Your stop this. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Do, 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 do. You're nearly there, so. Boom! Here we are. Live at last. Wow. We had some technical issues, so sorry about the delay. And this might mean some of the links we sent out won't work for some people, but hey, hopefully they'll come across our channel and see that we're live on a different link. So, we are here answering your questions about the Armory Bible game. This is the last live stream we are going to be doing before we officially release the game. Let's get some more lights here. I forgot to show this on. Boom. Is that too bright? Yeah. Too bright. Too bright to turn it off. <laughs> so we're here to answer your questions about the Army Bible game. So at any point, just ask a question. Ask, ask away. So, so you want to say anything before we unpack some of these questions we've got prepared? We're going to a conference tomorrow. We're going to um, the Aichia Conference, which is the Irish Christian Home Education Association. Isn't that it? That. Um, yeah, we're going there. We're Ooh. setting up a stall. And we have some stock. And we have posters. And we have t-shirts. Uh, well, I have t-shirts. Yours haven't arrived yet. Um, yeah, we're hopefully going to showcase the armory there. So, the armory Bible game. We're pretty excited about that. Yeah, that's going to be fun. It's our first conference officially going and... Um telling people about the army bible game so i'm looking forward to it yeah that's something that we're hoping to do more of we want to travel around ireland check out what conferences are happening christian conferences seeing if we can get there i think that's we think that's a good yeah. way to promote the army i think so you might see us around if you're in ireland or the uk at some point so while we get into some of the uh the questions that we have, I, I suppose I just want to explain perhaps why we created the Armory Bible game. And here, if you go to the uh, website, we've got here, whoa, whoa, and you hit, go down to the about and you go to blog. Now, I wrote a blog here called Fathers Make Your Home an Armory. And I recommend that you read that at some point. And that will already show you why we created the armory. The armory is ideally the home. We're trying to create the home as the space in which children, or anyone really, can learn the Bible in an effective way. So I think ultimately we're trying to target fathers because we recognize that fathers have a, a really key role in the discipleship of their children and I find a lot of the problems with children and youth ministry is that it focuses on children and youth but it excludes the family when mm. the family is actually what God has ordained to be the primary means of which children are discipled mm -hmm. now the army can be used by people of various ages various backgrounds but I think Ultimately, we are trying to target fathers in the home to teach the Bible. That doesn't mean that other people can't use the armory for their own purposes. It doesn't mean that you know, a bunch of people in their 30s can't get together, play the armory, and benefit from that. But that's that was the intention behind this project. So this is, I recommend that you read this blog. It isn't too long. And that will really show you the, the reasons why we have decided to create this game. I suppose I just want to share some, some scriptures with you. So let me get some up here, right? So I'm just going to go to some of these and we can discuss them. Where am I? Psalm 44. Okay. Psalm 44 is right here. Looking at verse 1. 
We have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us the deeds you did in the days, in the days of old. Ooh, what is this? Let's try to sort that out. There we go. Right, so it's clear from this passage that the fathers spoke of the deeds that God had done in the past to their children. It's just assumed in this passage. So we're going to be looking at just some of these scriptures, different examples of where fathers in particular are, are it's either assumed that they're, they're teaching their, their children the scriptures, or it's actually directly commanded. So let's look at the um, Shema, I'm sure you're familiar with this. We're going to Deuteronomy 6, uh, 4 to 9, let's open that up. Okay. Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9. Hear Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And these words which I command to you shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. So, oh, what's happened now? I think there's like a key that's, when I press, there it is. Ah. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort that out quickly. And Sarah, you talk to people. Like well, people. we're basically hoping for you to submit some questions. So if you're watching, um, please think of a question that you'd like to ask uh, about the Armory Bible game. So if you're new to it, if you have no idea what it's about, or you have any concerns about the game, or anything from its price to its release date which is tomorrow to the content to what we hope to do with it in the future just ask any questions okay fix it sorry about that right <laughs> these words i command you today shall be in your heart you shall teach them diligently to your children so notice it's not the responsibility of someone else it's you shall love the lord god you shall teach this to your children and when you should talk of them when you sit down in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign to your hand and shall be as faultless between your eyes. You shall write them on your doorposts of your house and on your gates. So basically all the time. It isn't, uh, it's not like, oh, we, we do discipleship on a Sunday before church or after church. Or, oh yeah, I send my children to this youth group or children's group and that's, that's where it happens. It happens all the time. So we wanted to create a, a tool that parents could use to do exactly that, to teach the Bible throughout, throughout the, the, the time at home and to teach it in a way that is rewarding and engaging. And as well, um, it came about through the Sean combining some talents that he has. I think we spoke about it in the um, podcast, the interview with Girish Manuel. We spoke about uh, using your gifts for God's glory. And Sean, we, we came to a stronger conviction of us using our gifts for God's work to the best of our ability. And this just came to Sean. He, um, used different interests different things he's picked up through the years and this is what what came about so it's a, a, also an encouragement to you guys watching uh to examine what gifts you have how can you use your gifts to glorify god and you know have fun as well it, it was fun creating the armory wasn't it yeah it's been it has been very interesting <laughs> and entertaining and... well you know it's just Really, yeah. yeah, and I suppose we're yeah we're really excited to to release the game officially tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is when we officially release the game. So here's one in Ephesians six four. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. So here's a direct command for fathers to train their children. So not passing this responsibility onto someone else. It's not your pastor's job to disciple your children. It's not the youth worker's job, it's not the public school, not the primary school, whatever whatever outside source, it's the father, the primary 
responsibility of instruction as the father. And if you disagree, let us know. <laughs> yeah. Because um, I'm just going to. Um, Shall I talk some more? Sorry, yeah, no, you go ahead. I'm just thinking of something. Uh, I think um, the kind of target age that we were thinking of is kind of people our age or maybe in their 30s because gaming is huge now. There's been a resurgence in like physical games, board games, card games, and the fantasy genre is really popular, isn't it? Yeah. And that's something that you've always been interested in. Like we love Lord of the Rings. Um, that I think hugely... And also, obviously, Pilgrim's Progress, and you kind of discovering that being the foundation for all fantasy genre. And just your own personal interest, your own gaming experience uh, influenced the style and the genre of, of the game. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting because you look at where did all these tropes out of the fantasy genre come from look at oh, where do you get these ideas of like elves being like you know slender with pointed ears and these ideas of different roles like uh, ranger and sort of warriors and, and these different things and it actually comes back down to uh, two people <laughs> it comes down to tolkien and lewis who both worked very closely uh, writing their different respective no novels of the um, chronicles of narnia and lord of the rings and really that kick-started this, this idea. But then you think, well, where did they get the tropes from? And you start realizing that uh, Tolkien was greatly influenced by Beowulf. It's this uh, account of a man slaying a dragon, this ancient uh, Nordic um, account. And then I think you have to agree that they probably took some influence from previous writings like Pilgrim's Progress, which was the first English novel which itself is an analogy of the Christian life by which an individual puts on the armor of God and, you know, fights the devil and, you know, fights a dragon. So I think these themes were, you know, developed and carried out. And I think ultimately, where did, where did Pilgrim's Progress get it from? Where did John Bunyan get those analogies from? Where he got directly from the Bible, from Ephesians 6, putting on the armor of God, um, you know, from apocryphal writings like the Revelation, Clearly talks about these symbols of you know the devil being a dragon and all these other things. So I think ultimately the whole fantasy genre has its roots in the Christian worldview. So I think that can be a very powerful way to start a conversation with people and to, sh to show and say, look, you see all these types and all these things. Well, they can trace themselves back to the Bible. Why do we have a desire to... To put on armor and like fight and defeat something. Well, it's because God has programmed us with innate desire to do spiritual warfare, to put on the armor of God and, and battle sin and, and to and to be in His kingdom. So I think if that isn't expressed in the church and through Christianity, it will be expressed somewhere else. Mm. Ultimately. Yeah. And why do people love to see some like a righteous king like Aragorn? come out of nowhere and assume the throne well you know as the heir of Isildur. you know why do they love that it's because innately um why do people love rescuers these saviors i think though we suppress the truth innately there is a knowledge uh and a desire for there to be someone righteous and that that person's christ he's the ultimate righteous king um, so yeah, we know that Tolkien has, you know, there's, he was a Roman Catholic and we're not saying oh, that yeah. it's a perfect biblical analogy at all, but you know, there's stuff in there that you can see, oh, okay. You know, when you understand his influences, some of his influences, cause I think he was also kind of influenced by pagan mythology as well. Oh yeah, he? definitely. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's. I think there's enough in there though to point people towards the true gospel yeah. and to start a conversation. Mm. So you can recognize, yeah, Tolkien was Roman Catholic, didn't have a great understanding of the gospel, but he mixed very closely with the evangelicals like C.S. Lewis. So I think, 
I think there's enough within his writings and in the genre to point people toward the gospel and to start a conversation, which is ultimately mm -hmm. what we hope to do yeah. with, with that. So Yeah, and we, we want people to have fun as well. Friends to have fun, uh, families to have fun, married couples to have fun playing the armory. So... Uh, hey, I'm glad you can join us. What's his name? Brandon. Hi, Brandon. If you have any questions, let us know. We're here to answer them. And um, so, yeah, it's just, again, talking about this whole idea of like child and youth ministry and the who's, whose job is it to disciple children and young people. Well, here, let's go to Ephesians 4, 11 to 12. It says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So notice in this passage, it says that the responsibility of the church is to, verse 12, equip the saints for the work of ministry. Okay? The purpose of the church is to equip saints, not to do the work of ministry for them. So the purpose of your church is actually to equip Christians to go and make disciples. So when it comes to child and youth ministry, the church isn't there to minister to children and youth. It's there to equip saints to minister to children and youth, if that makes sense. So that, that's going to completely change mm -hmm. the way you're thinking of child and youth ministry. So, and I found this in my experience of being a child, full-time child and youth minister, was that you'd spend, you know, an hour a week with these kids, and you can cover very little within that hour. So... The armory is designed to teach the Bible in the home or wherever. It can be done at youth groups, can be done at, after church, wherever. But we want to try to get into this habitual um, opening of the Word of God, training, learning how to apply the Bible. And that's exactly what we've, we've, we've sought to do with the armory Bible game. Um, so really you can ask questions about anything uh, to do with the Armory or the Armory Bible game. So we're releasing the game tomorrow. So we wanted to host a live Q&A to welcome that in for tomorrow, the uh, release of the game and also answer any questions that people might have because the Armory is relatively new. So yeah, so people might not be completely familiar with it. So ask whatever you like. If you go to the armybiblegame.com, there's a website. If you go to the giveaway, you can enter for uh, our giveaway. This is actually the last day you can enter for this giveaway. So if you go down to the bottom, just type in your email, sign up to our mailing list, and you can be in the, the line to win the Army Bible game. So do that. It's a great way to keep updated on some of the things that we're doing. And also, we're going to be doing other giveaways in the future. So make sure to sign up for that. So, Di, you've asked, how do I know what card to pick up? Do you mean... Um, armor cards or do you mean challenge cards like attack defense utility so could you just um, let me know which one you mean that would be okay so attack defense okay so um, I'm the main playtester, so sure. I've been the person who's tested the game, so I'm very familiar with the roles. Um, we actually have, um, there's a description, isn't there, um, online, there's like a, is there an in-depth Game Master, there's a Game Master tool, isn't there? No, yeah, there's a the how to play. Yeah, there's, and there's a how to play. So, so look, if you go to the website, go down to game, how to play, here are essentially all the game rules you can learn how to play so I think specifically when it comes to how do you know what card to do well it depends on what you're seeking to do so yeah. I've, got, I've got the game here in front of me and it's understanding the role that you're playing and what so, you're aiming so to do so just explain the abilities each player has these abilities at the back and it tells you which it's cards you need to do them so the you're going to be doing your challenges based on those cards yeah so the point of the game is to forge, you do challenges to forge armor to defeat the boss, which represents sin. So you're 
putting on the armor of God and you're defeating the um, the boss. <laughs> I should... You just said that. <laughs> I know, I was trying to think of his actual name. Well, the point of the game is name. essentially to actually teach the Bible and teach apologetics uh, to all ages. So basically how the game works is that there's attack, defense, and utility card challenges. And when a player picks one of those up, they then are directed towards a game master, a person who has prepared essentially a Bible study, and all the uh, challenges are based around um, those things of teaching the Bible and equipping people and, and training them to understand how Scripture is used. We've done a couple of uh, playthroughs, so if you go to our website, there's how to play. Yeah. We've done. So if you want to get a better understanding, watch watch our Let's Plays because that gives that will give you a good understanding of what we're doing. So, so we really want to teach the Bible. In an organic way so that when people are out in the world and they meet a jehovah's witness they suddenly know how to engage with a jehovah's witness not because they've been sitting down and like been reading loads about jehovah's witnesses but because they've been playing this game and through playing it they have just learned scripture as like as able to so they're able to have a conversation with for instance a jehovah's witness yeah so to answer your question briefly die it's through trial and error that I came to understand the roles a lot better and I've come to develop a strategy of what challenges I need to do to get armor for the individual roles in order to progress in the game. So like you need utility for the warrior to get more armor and without certain pieces of armor, you can't attack the boss. So initially you'd probably wanna do some of those and then you'd wanna do attack challenges so you have attack points but you have to maintain your utility cards at the same time. And then for the bard, um, I need to do attack challenges to get pieces of armor that will help the warrior to attack the boss. So I'll initially need to get those. So it's really, it's through being familiar with the roles and that comes with playing it more often. And it also helps if, you know, that's why Sean has, um, he did the kind of digital version of the game, the online version of the game, so that it's more immersive for people watching because it can be difficult if you're just watching us playing a card game and you can't actually read what I'm reading. So now when we do, when we're playing the game, you can also see it done digitally and you can read these on the screen and stuff, so it's pretty cool. So I hope that's kind of answered your question. Yeah, so we've done different... Uh, apologetics packs based on different world religions so if you go down to our website once you go down to store uh, this game will be available as of uh, tomorrow can, there are some pre-order rewards you can get today if you want to quickly jump on that but then we've done these game master tools so we've got world religions the whole pack here or individually these packs so I can show you just quickly the Roman Catholic one uh, here Roman Catholic we gave this as a free download to people on our mailing list recently so if you are part of our mailing list check your email you have you would have received this uh, in your um, your email, so do that. So how to share the gospel with a Roman Catholic? We go down here. It's essentially teaching these three arguments, okay, based on these scriptures. So the attack has th these questions here, and the defense utility. And at the end, so once you learn these three arguments, you then have a quest at the end of the game, and that's just a way to continue the Bible learning outside of the game. So. If you're part of our mailing list, download that, have, have a look at it. That'll give you a good un understanding of what the Armory is about. Also check out previous live streams, uh, previous Let's Plays on our YouTube channel, because that also will give you an understanding of what the game's about. Hmm. Okay, so now we've got some more questions, uh, some more scriptures here about the importance of fathers teaching the Bible to their children. So I'm just going to whip this up. Boom. Right, so we have 1 Thessalonians 2, 11 and 12. So as you know, we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father does his own children. You may work worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. So Paul the Apostle is saying, is saying here, in, the, in his ministry, he acted like a father in that he exhorted, comforted and charged these these other Christians to work to walk worthy of the kingdom of glory. So that, that gives you an understanding of what fathers are meant to do. They're meant to exhort, comfort, and charge their children to walk worthy of the kingdom of glory. So again, we have this other another scripture commanding fathers rarely to have an active 
and continual involvement in their own children and discipling them. So not handing this responsibility over to someone else. Fathers are commanded in the scriptures to directly have a massive impact in the lives of their children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I know it might seem like we're doing a lot of scripture hopping, but I just I really want to hit, hit this point home because this is essentially why we created the army was to teach, the, to encourage fathers to teach the Bible in the home and to teach apologetics. Like we said, anyone can use this tool, but I think our ultimate goal would be trying to get hold of fathers to teach this to their children. Yeah, because I think sadly, um, you know, it, it's not i don't want to be we don't want to be too critical but there has been a feminizing of you know there's this oh, i sorry that's our that's our son he's been very good but i don't know what's, what's going on we could bring him on now. for a while yeah um basically um men now generally aren't encouraged to take charge of their homes and to invest a lot into their children it's it's sadly not a done thing and that's that type of sentiment has even infiltrated the church um where generally there can be a lack of discipleship and, and just parents or people don't know how to do that um you know again there's been a, a feminizing of the culture and maybe even the church in some regards so uh, that's another thing that we're trying to do. We're trying to encourage um, fathers to and husbands to look at the Bible and see the importance the Bible places on their role as a father and as a husband, their influence in the home, their leadership in the home, and um, step up to it, really. Yeah. Go get them. I'll bring them in. Yeah, I might go get them. So, excuse me. I'll just hang on before you do that. Let me just mute, mute your microphone so that you're not like wrecking people's ears. Okay, go. Sure. So, apologetics it comes from the Greek word apologia, or apologia, which means to give a reasoned defense of the faith. And it simply is understand. It's it's a it's a subsection of evangelism essentially, or preaching the gospel. It's being able to give reasons for why you are a Christian and why other people should become Christian as well. So it often gets confused with, um, so apologetics is seeking to explain the why, not the how. So a lot of people can confuse that. So um, for instance, apologetics, they might say, oh, I'm a Christian because God has transformed my heart of stone and given me a heart of flesh. I've become born again. Uh, that is the cause of you being a Christian. It's not the reason why you are a Christian. And the reason why you are a Christian is because Christianity is true. So apologetics seeks to deal more with the intellect and uh, the mind and reason to give uh, reasons as to why someone ought to be a Christian and really it comes down to the fact that Christianity is true and that's why someone should become a Christian because God is and he has spoken and we should listen to what he says. So here's Enoch. Enoch. Yeah. Enoch. Can I put your mic back on? Sure, I'm gonna take it off again. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so while Sarah does that, oh, don't play with that little boy. It's going to be very noisy if you no. know that. Yeah, no. Okay. okay. So it says, fathers, do not provoke your children. Ooh. Sorry, guys. Oh, no. okay. It's okay. Oh, it's all right. I'm going to mute you because unless, yeah. you're, unless you're speaking. Right. So it says, fathers, do not provoke your children. These, they become discouraged. So fathers are to encourage their children. And that's another role of the father, to encourage them to know the Bible for themselves. Oh, you bumped your head. Oh, Albie. Oh. <laughs> Where's the balloon? He loves balloons. Oh, cranky little boy. Yeah, I think he's uh, he's tired. Yeah. Right. 
Okay. Bye bye. See you, Enoch. Okay, so I've got two more scriptures to share with you very briefly. I say, it's so Psalm 78, verses 3 to 6, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, telling to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works he has done. So it's, it's clear from the scripture that fathers are to teach the wonderful works that God has done. So again, another scripture that demonstrates the importance of fathers teaching the Bible in the home. I think that's biblically the ultimate um, way of young people hearing biblical truth. And the army is designed to encourage that practice and to equip fathers, parents to do that. Obviously, mothers have a huge role in that as well. So I'm, I'm just trying to place the, the importance of what the scriptures say, particularly about fathers, because fathers are commanded to lead their homes. And they're the ones who are going to have to give an account of how they have stewarded uh, the family that God has entrusted to them. So again, it continues here. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, and they should make them known to their children. That the generation to come might know them, the children who, who would be born, they may arise and declare them to their children. So again, we have this biblical model. They want to see a revival. They want to see uh, the growth of Christianity. Well, instill within people to train their children, who when they grow up will train their children, and so on and so forth. And you'll have this generational effect happening. It's not going to happen overnight, but that's something we're, we're trying to encourage as well. We want to see parents teaching their children so when their children grow up they will teach their children and we will have this cycle so yeah i think that's that's at the heart of this project the army bible game to equip people to know the bible to do so in a fun and interactive way to do so in the home and yeah it's, we're really excited to release this game tomorrow so if Today is the last day for you to check out these pre-order rewards and we're giving away some pretty cool uh, packages. So for instance, this, it works out to be around half price if you include that. So we've got some really cool perks, even a, a lifetime membership of the guild here. And the guild is just a, a way for people to support this project on a monthly basis, help us cover some of our expenses uh, to do, uh, to basically run this project. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely check that out. Make sure to sign up to our mailing list on the giveaway section of the website. You could be in, your ch in for a chance to win a copy of the game. So I'm just going to leave the, the floor open for a little while. If anyone has some questions, let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. So if you are a single mom like I was, you can still teach your children. Yeah, you can. And I suppose that's where the church comes in. We want the people to step in. But that's making the best out of a, a poor circumstance. I think ideally, and what the, the Bible teaches is that the Father is present to teach teach the, teach the Scriptures. And I suppose if there isn't a Father present, then uh, men in the church need to step up. And they need to disciple younger men. Uh, the Scriptures say, He who walks with wise men shall be wise. So we should be getting young men young boys who are fools and seeking to partner with partner them up with older men who are wise who are learned in the scriptures to pass down this wisdom and to be role models for them because young men will find role models in something if it's not godly men in the church it will be oh mr cranky if it's not godly men in the church it will be football stars it will be video game experts or so on and so forth they'll find it in something or in someone so we want to also encourage the, yeah, as Sarah said, the, the manliness of men. Bye-bye again. You're going again. So. So I think we're going to end this pretty 
pretty quick. We just wanted to do a, a quick update, a little, a little bit of information. This little guy's getting cranky and tired, so, and we've got a long day tomorrow because we're going to a conference. I think I've covered. Right. Yeah, I think we'll leave it there. So thanks for popping in, for dropping in, if you could. And yeah, we'll chat to you next time. Make sure to check out the Army Bible game. And check out this pre-order section. And um, yeah, if, if not, just leave a comment in the comment section and we can answer your questions there. If you didn't, we weren't able to catch us live. We did have some technical problems uh, beginning this live stream. So anyway. God bless you guys, and thanks for popping in. We'll see you later. God bless. Bye-bye.